when you start taking psychedelics as magical and mystical studies and just as sort of exploring what you can experience with your consciousness, things get real fucking cool. Yeah. But I'm also aware of the, the, the dark side of it. So if I ever go through a period of like, okay, I should stop fucking around with this shit, I'll stop immediately. Like if I have a strong kind of... Well, I would have, maybe two years ago, I would have said demons are not real. It's all a projection of your insecurities, yeah. and it's all a projection of your fears. I remember us yeah. having this podcast, actually. Do you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, did we talk about this before? Mate, everyone, be- everyone, well, I mean, not everyone, but a lot of people in the spiritual path doesn't believe in evil until they actually go into contact with it. I'm not talking about your insecurity, your trauma, your this or that. I'm talking about true fucking evil that plagues the universe not just humans you know what i mean like and once you get into contact with this force it's like it's so overwhelming that you can't deny it just well like, it's undeniable just like you having your one is everything experience you know what i mean It'd it's equally like, as undeniable as that equally equally but yeah. they're not equal in power that's what i've learned that that's when i reconciled my existential crisis is that light is actually more powerful and if you, you can look at it on the most fundamental basic level is Look at a 24-hour day. Is it 12 hours nighttime, 12 hours daytime? Oh, it's slightly more daytime, right? I think the Bible... I'm, I'm a retard when it comes to the Bible. Sorry if that uh, <laughs> offended people. Uh, but with the Bible, it's like... Uh, fuck, what we're we talking about? Evil. That evil uh, is one-third. Evil. Also, they, I think it's something like... It's two-thirds evil, one-third... No, two-thirds good, one-third evil. I think that's the... The ratio of I heard that somewhere. I don't, it could be complete bullshit, but I feel like light is definitely a little bit more. Well, it, it, the, the, life yeah. always finds a way. Exactly, because if it was fifty-fifty, we would be stagnant, right? And if it was fifty-one percent or more darkness, we wouldn't exist. It has to yep. be at least fifty-one percent. And maybe though that number fluctuates. Maybe there are certain phases in humanity where the, there is a little bit more darkness. You know what I mean? And others yeah. where it's more yeah. of a golden age. Well. The way I think of it, it's like an alligator's not necessarily evil. No. But I mean, if it eats your kid, you're gonna feel the fucking fuck that horrible. Alligator. Yeah, yeah. And, but I, I think that there are alligators, interdimensional a- alligators. There are these things that exist in this, in these spaces, these ayahuasca spaces, the spiritual spaces, that are alligators. They want to. They. That's what they do. You know, they they feed off of that. Mm-hmm. They feed some, off of that. Some. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Well, I think ayahuasca. What I'm basically trying to get at, get at is that ayahuasca and psychedelics and stuff can you can get possessed. And before I wouldn't have believed that, but now I think that like you can actually you can actually get things attached to you through messing with these things if you're not careful. And that's why it's important to have a shaman and stuff. For sure. And I wouldn't I wouldn't have believed that a few years ago. And again, even just look at a basic example as above, so below. Like it's like going through a fucked up, dirty, radioactive city and acting like it's not going to stick on you if you walk past certain roads because you're so full of light, you know? If that doesn't apply in the physical world, why would it apply in the spiritual world? That's how I look at it, anyway. But it's, I don't know, it's interesting. I, I think that once you get into contact with it, truly, and there's a difference, because I know a lot of people use this example, I used to use this as well, like, oh, but what about, is, is a lion evil for killing a gazelle? No, that's, how can you compare that, which is clearly a survival thing, Versus, like, okay, an example of evil would be, I don't know, me fucking absolutely murdering someone and... Choosing. Choosing to murder someone and having a smile on my face as I do it, knowing I'm causing pain just for the sake of suffering. That's evil, right? But killing someone for defending your family? Not evil. And then someone could be like, where are you drawing these moral distinctions? Well, we kind of have to, (laughs) don't we? Uh, like, are we just going to live in this grey area where nothing's evil, nothing's good? But I know, I, I think there is a, a definitely a distinction of, like, there's evil and then there's... We can just tell. Evil. Like, when you just, like, check in with yourself, you can and you're it. like, okay, I know. You I can... know that's bad, I know this is good. You can. And again, I challenge people who say that evil doesn't exist to actually go into the presence of someone evil. Not... And again, there's a difference between someone who's you know, had a traumatised life, he does bad shit, because you could have argued that I was evil as a kid but deep down I had a good heart whereas some people really are like fucking rotten we should try to we should try to meet someone that's evil yeah I think so like truly evil. Actually, 
Yeah, like go meet a serial yeah. killer. Exactly. We we'll go meet a serial killer or someone that's in prison. We could do that. But I like to understand. I think evil is a very important thing to understand. <coughs> you know? And that's what I, I like doing. That's why I even I like watching like fucked up TV shows sometimes, just so I can understand darkness a little bit more. You know. Cause... Well, that's why we like. That's why we like our Dingo. Yeah. Because he knows. Because he knows. He's been there. Personally, I don't trust anyone that doesn't have a dark side. Well, that's what. <laughs> it's like the um, and Doctor Strange what's the wise one's name the ancient one the ancient one <laughs> does she have a name in that movie the or is it just one. the ancient one that's <laughs> it it's just, the, it's just the ancient one it's like but it's like her it's she was drawing power from the dark dimension yeah 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 it's the shamans the real shamans the real healers are both mm. they draw they draw power from both sides but they transmit it but you have to know where you are in life because there are some people who think that they can go into that dabble in the darkness, but then it just eats them whole because they don't have the discipline or they don't have the the will. I feel like will is very important. Well, that's why the dietas are are powerful, I think, because it it teaches you discipline. You're in isolation. Mm. Your your body is you know is going to feeling extremes and stuff like that, and then you make it through. Mm. And I mean. If these plants really do have personalities, which they seem to, some plants seem to have louder personalities than others, like ayahuasca, mushrooms, marijuana. You know, all pl- some some of these plants seem to have marijuana, loud personalities. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> some of them are loud. Yeah. And um, some plants are quiet, and like these plants that you take, like uh, the chikuni plant that like puts you in contact with the chikuni spirits, or like lavender, lavender, camelonga. I mean, there's, like, all these different plants that people diet, the sham- shamanistic plants that people diet, that apparently you can also befriend. Mm. You can you can befriend the same way that you can sort of befriend ayahuasca, the spirit of ayahuasca. You can befriend these quieter plants, and they will help you in life. Do you believe that? Do you think that's real? I believe if you believe it, it's real. But in, even in, a, I'm not even just saying that in a context anyway. I mean, like in a practical sense. Like if you truly believe that, it becomes real. That it becomes real. Not, I don't think that. But I'm not one of those people who think that. Oh, no matter if you, whatever you believe will come true. I think there's obviously limits to the <laughs> reality. You know what I mean? Otherwise, if it was all belief systems, then we should be able to fly. You know what I mean? Like right. if you really truly believe that. But I don't know. When it comes to evil, though, do you do you think that it is it? it's something that's born within humans like it's this new thing or do you think it's an actual force in nature and like i said before it's not the the lion hunting down a gazelle it's the it's it's the crazy ant who fucking injects fucking poison into some animal's brain and then controls <laughs> them and makes them kill themselves you know what i mean that that's like a, a separate i don't want to say separate but it's something there's a diff, there's levels to it do you think that evil is a nature's force or it's born in humans. Well, mushrooms once showed me evil as being this. It showed me normal life, mm-hmm. and then I could see a darkness that was just always there. So I think it's a force that is just always that just is there. Mm. It's the it's it's balance in some kind of way, I guess. Well, because you know, some, you could consider, let's say, natural disaster as like a evil acts but then is it because i think it's important to cleanse the planet every once in a while like even i'm saying this even if i died yeah of I, course i wouldn't take it personally it's like well there's no how many it has to happen are there? yeah yeah but let's think like what's a truly evil i mean rape is an evil act this, this is a new this is a new concept that i'm not, not not evil but like the concept of evil being a force in nature like what what are examples in nature yeah that could point to this Outside of human, outside of outside humans, outside of humans, outside of humans, yeah. Well, let's see. Is it is it evil if a human does something? Because you'd have to understand the conditions that inspired the evil action, because mm-hmm. ultimately we are all victims of circumstance. You know, like we are, we don't get to choose our families and the way at, we are raised start, and shit like that. At the beginning, we are. But I mean, Point. it's all connected. I mean, even the the start. Even if you become, even though we make our own decisions and stuff like that, right? It because still has, has some influence. It still has an influence. 
and I'm not saying that's an excuse for anything, but it is like when you are be trying to be objective and trying to like understand where this evil is coming, you have to take into account like the full timeline. Why so I think like they do. yeah, why people do what they do, and I think I mean there probably is much studies on it, but I, it w- it would be interesting to see if there are patterns in people that display behavior which we consider evil if there are patterns in their home lives and if there are patterns in their social lives Mm. that if there are things that inspire this behavior or if this behavior is just genetic or if it's random or or is it a a spiritual hijacking perhaps or is it a spiritual is it is it demonic possession some people turn into serial killers and they you never would have guessed in a million years that that would have turned out that way Right, and then some yeah. people grow up in fucked up lives, and yeah, they go down a criminal path. But you know that deep down they're okay, and then they have a maybe a born again Christian moment, and they become a fucking yeah. pastor or something. And that you could say, well, they started off in an evil place, and the other people start off in a really, quote unquote, nice surroundings. How do they become right. evil? And I know that yeah, evil, let's evil think. is well, not it, it's not an absolute. Like it is relative, but just because something's relative, it doesn't mean that we should just ignore it. You know what I mean? Well, let's think of, like, nature. What's something evil in nature? Well, have you heard of the game Last of Us? No. All right, well, it's an apocalyptic game, and it's a, basically a zombie game, but the the way they explain it is, like, this fungal growth. That, oh, yes, I, I have heard of this game. That is, it's a mushroom, yeah, right? Yeah, and that is based on a real-life real thing. thing, on, like, there are these fungus that grows inside ants. And I think they get raised from the dead or they become like zombies in a certain aspect. I don't know if that's evil, but I get, I'm just getting a little bit closer, or a, a little bit more of a twisted way that nature works. I don't know. Yeah. Like, what's the survival instinct of that? Or is it just the mushrooms that want to survive and the only way they can survive is to kill ants from the inside out? Yeah, it must be. I don't know. <laughs> to and it, and they, they come from spores just like mm-hmm. flying through the air. Or maybe it's like, maybe we have different puppet masters, because like, you know, when humans aren't just the top of the evolutionary chain, I mean, it seems like we are at least on this physical dimension, but what about the this, this spiritual realms? Maybe there are, you know, like we're talking about demons or angels. These are just labels I'm putting, I don't know what you want to call them, archetypes. But maybe there are certain puppet masters, there are some evil ones, telling us, to, hey, come this way, come this way, and then there's the light one. He's like, no. Actually, you know what? Something that Alex Jones said, which not saying that he's right or wrong, I agree with him, but something that he said that stuck with me is that evil is much easier to hijack and evil is always going to go out of its way to lure you in, whereas good, you have to seek out God. You get what I'm saying? It's not going to go out of its way. It's not going to go through, it's not going to jump through hoops and hurdles to try and get you on the team because he know, it's like they know, like, you're going to learn eventually. You know what I mean? And I found that interesting. because I, I feel like that's true with even a society or even getting rich or successful it's so much easier to do evil, fucked up, criminal shit and get gains much quicker. Whereas if you want to build a career on something that's worth something, then it takes a very, very, very long time, you know? Yeah. So maybe there's... Yeah, I agree with that. There's something to that. Evil is very, very easy to hijack. (laughs) Even drugs. I'm not saying drugs are evil, but like you can... It's so easy to just buy a drug and just feel good temporarily, you know what I mean? But then, as you know, there's always a price for that at the end. Well, Fernando, one of Fernando's realizations was that, like, cocaine opens you up to demons. I believe that. I believe that. I I don't think... I've never tried it before, but... I don't don't think drugs are in this neutral plane, you know what I mean? They're not obviously good or bad in and of themselves, but there are definitely some drugs that tend towards... Have a tendency. Yeah, it's a tendency, exactly. Like Daytura. Just like nature has the tendency towards light, towards progression. And like, yeah, we might go through these regression spirals and go backwards. But ultimately, ultimately, if you were to get like a mathematical statistical line, it would go upwards. You know what I mean? Until we go through an extinction and it, I guess the graph resets. But nonetheless, it seems like we're going on a <laughs> forward projection. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so too, man. These are things that I have to tell myself. <laughs> I don't want to believe that the Earth is going to just go more towards evil. But even, I don't know, even from a logical standpoint, I feel like more people are waking up, people are becoming more passionate. Even, like, the whole anti-racism thing, that's an awesome thing, I think. You know, I think that yeah. eventually 
whether we're going to do it or not, but it, it seems that we're at least trying to stamp out certain behaviors in human society. You know what I mean? Like rape. Yeah, we definitely are. Pedophilia. But fuck. That to me is evil. Pedophilia is definitely evil because it's you're taking, you're stripping innocence away from someone that has no choice. Exactly. So how can how can you compare that to a lion killing a gazelle? You know what I yeah. mean? Like to me, it doesn't make any sense. Like when, because people confuse chaos with evil. Evil is not chaos. One might breed from one another, but it's not the same thing. There are nuances. So, fuck. But good is powerful. Yeah. That's the good news. Well, and also, like, I wonder how much it all matters. <clears throat> matter? Like, we're good. It's not funny how we uh, call it matter. Like, physical yeah. matter. It does matter. <laughs> Literally. Because, we're like. You mean, like, from an ultimate, like, a, a actual yeah, point? Yeah, like, we're going to die anyway. How much does it actually matter? And it could be extremely important and determined. It could determine our next life and it could deter determine our, the path for all lives that we are going to have there could be no next lives it could be completely meaningless and pointless but i wonder how much how much these right. morals that we are naturally inclined to feel we naturally we wake up and as we become consciously aware as a human being we like kids don't want to hurt animals you know like a little kid you see all those little kids crying over like some some kids do. Some kids do. some kids. Yeah, I mean some kids are they'll like have smile, they'll, they'll have a smile on their face and fucking lick the blood. Off their <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, but, I, I but there is though, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there is like an, an instinctual part of humans that just would save a dog if it was drowning. Mm. You know. So would we're you, not indifferent about that kind of stuff. Would you say or do you believe that humans are born good and that we get polluted yes. that way? Or do you think there are some? Do you, or do you think there are We're some cool. cases how, like a Hitler, for example, where from like it was imprinted in the stars that he was going to be born into this evil motherfucker, and then yes. that, that another question is: there's, is there necessary evil? Is that yes. a thing, or is that just something that we say to justify evil shit? Well, I think these things are but, definitely they're, they're they're necessary because they inspire change and they inspire growth in society and mm -hmm. they are become powerful stories of our species which we carry with us and that becomes like a part of our narrative as a collective which we like use to. That's true. Well, movies, become, video yeah. games, they would not be half not they wouldn't even be a thing if it wasn't for all the fucked up shit that we've gone through. Yeah. In our human history, you know what I mean? All, all the great movies have these really extreme conflicts, you know, this hero's journey, overcoming evil. It's a very... Yeah, it seems to be a very common archetype, archetypal story, you know? Fighting evil. Alan, Alan Watts once said that Hitler is as natural as a hurricane. Mm. And that these moments, they come... That's scary. That's they, a scary hurricane, though. <laughs> it's a scary hurricane. But these things happen as like a sort of um, a cultural purge in a way you know mm. i think and then uh, uh, something interesting that i heard is that uh you know whether you believe in free will or not this is a you know up for debate but someone said that evil is the price of free will like the very fact that we can choose on what's right and what's wrong makes evil possible in the world whereas if there was zero free will and god wanted us to do exactly what he wanted us to do then it would just be an automatic program, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, again, you, I'm sure there's many ways you can argue this, but it's an interesting thought, you know? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus loves you, Dakota. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs>